likely will change here over the next 24 to 48 hours before landfall, but it doesn't even really matter. Even if it's a tropical storm at this point, uh, this storm is expected to sit and linger for about four to five yeah, days. Yeah, and that's the biggest problem. We don't know exactly where it's going to slow down. We don't know if it's going to kind of make a loop move north again, make a loop move south. But what we do know is it's going to be stuck over this general area for four to five days. That means 20 to 30 potential is there for more than three feet of rain, and that will cause tremendous and life-threatening flooding. So heed the evacuation orders, pay very close attention, get to higher ground. This is a serious situation as we head through. We understand from local officials is they're preparing for a storm the likes of which we may have never seen before. is heading straight at Texas, and right now residents there preparing for the worst. That ominous view from space as Hurricane Harvey churns in the Gulf of Mexico, gaining strength as it moves toward the coast. Expected to make landfall near Corpus Christi early Saturday as a dangerous Category 3 with winds up to 115 miles an hour. The only thing predictable about the storm is that it's unpredictable. From Texas to Louisiana and Mississippi, people loading up, preparing for more than 30 inches of rain in some places and a storm surge up to 12 feet. We need people to be aware. That awareness already leading to long lines at gas stations. Absolute insanity over this hurricane. And empty store shelves. Those in the Lone Star State planning to stay put, stocking up on the essentials. Water and food and batteries. Others now packing up, heading away from the coast and low-lying areas where voluntary evacuation orders are now in place. We're going to, in the strongest possible terms, as they say, get out of Dodge. Governor of Texas has preemptively issued a disaster declaration in 30 counties, and Louisiana's governor done the same for that entire state. Here, and it's just getting worse and worse every minute. This water slowly starting to come up uh, these steps. And what we understand from local officials is they're preparing for a storm the likes of which we may have never seen before. Evacuations have been well underway here in Corpus Christi over the course of the last 48 hours. The local mayor here ordering voluntary evacuations, but a lot of people here, they didn't wait for the mayor to say something. They got out of town ahead of time. They're used to this type of weather. They've seen it before. Back in 2008 with Hurricane Ike, 18 years before that, uh, there was a major storm. 40 years ago, there was another major storm here that really hit Corpus Christi very hard. So people did not want to take any chances. Businesses are boarded up. Schools are closed. The last Last flight into and out of Corpus Christi Airport left earlier this morning at 6.30 local. Service has been shut down until over the weekend. Local officials here say that they have not officially designated any uh, 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 areas for shelter or relief because they're really encouraging everyone to get out of town. And we saw that exactly, what was happening yesterday when we were making our way in here in the interstate. We were one of the only cars driving towards coastal Texas. Uh, many other people, most of people, uh, were driving north towards uh, more secure areas, areas like San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, anywhere here uh, but, co uh, but coastal Texas. Uh, the storm of, of heavy rainfall to the north and west of the center of the storm. So anybody in those quadrants uh, from the center are in for a lot of miserable days of weather, especially as this thing stalls uh, over coastal Texas. What about the measurements? Uh, it's one thing what you see, but what types of numbers are you measuring from Harvey? 
Yes, sir. During the short time that we were in the uh, storm, we saw a steady pressure of about 967 millibars in the center. We were measuring flight level winds a little over 100 knots, especially uh, strongest winds north, northeast of the center, and uh, and then just a tremendous amount of rainfall we were measuring on radar as well. Yeah, we're, we're told this is a, a life-threatening situation. Uh, you know, the National Hurricane Center says it's a, 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 a life-threatening situation because of all of that rainfall. You say it'll be days of rainfall. Can you just tell me a little bit about what it's like to fly into that storm I and mean, what it feels like? I think the plane you're in is nicknamed Kermit, right? What, what, it, what does it exactly feel like when you're flying right in a hurricane? Yep, we're flying on uh, on NOAA 42, a uh, very robust turboprop aircraft that can handle the weather. We see the uh, really heavy rain bands uh, of, of this of this rain is full of thunderstorms, a certain amount of lightning, and we get bounced around every time we run through one of these rain bands. Not too bad. And then the eye wall is the really roughest part. And then we get to the center, and it's extremely calm, just um, unimaginably calm compared to how bouncy it is outside of that. Uh, tonight we made three passes through the center from all quadrants to get accurate measurements of the winds and rainfall all the way around the center. As they say, get out of Dodge. The storm surge has gone from a predicted four to six feet to a possible 10 feet. And at a 10 foot water height, you're gonna be cut off from the island. And there's a good chance if you've got that much water, you're not gonna have any electricity. I'll be very honest with you. We could mandate it, but people have to make a decision of their own. And the enforcement, I'm not going to have the risk our police and fire people going and trying to drag somebody out of the house if they don't want to go. Intensity probably will change here over the next 24 to 48 hours before landfall, but it doesn't even really matter. Even if it's a tropical storm at this point, uh, this storm is expected to sit and linger for about four to five. Yeah, days. and that's the biggest problem. We don't know exactly where it's going to slow down. We don't know if it's going to kind of make a loop move north again, make a loop move south. But what we do know is it's going to be stuck over this general track. Now, this was in September back in 2008. Texas hasn't seen a hurricane since then. In fact, a total of only 15 hurricanes have made landfall in Texas since 1950, and only four of those hurricanes occurred this century. Now we are monitoring Tropical Storm Harvey, which could become a hurricane as soon as today. Will it make landfall along Texas as a hurricane? I want to turn to our lead meteorologist, Jeff Baradelli of our West Palm Beach affiliate WPC in Florida. Jeff, what can we expect? Yeah, so last night it just looked like this might be a big flooding threat with a little bit of wind. Now it's looking like a major wind and storm surge threat and then a ton of flooding on top of that. So uh, this is really a triple threat storm as it heads in and it looks like it's going to make landfall probably Friday night into early Saturday morning. As you can see, the satellite shows it's consolidating. It's getting stronger. It has a very circular presentation indicative of a healthy storm. It has just been upgraded to a hurricane. It's no longer a tropical storm. The winds are up to 80 miles an hour. These are all the watches and warnings that are in effect and notice the storm surge number is way up from before. We're now expecting six to 10 feet of storm surge anywhere from Port Lavaca all the way south of Corpus Christi and obviously flash flood watches for inland areas in Texas. All right, here's the official forecast track from Harvey and you notice that the National Hurricane Center is saying it's going to be a category three major hurricane. It will be the first major hurricane making landfall in the United States since Hurricane Wilma back in 2005 and the projection is somewhere around Port Lavaca down to around Corpus Christi winds around 115 miles an hour gusts higher than that Friday night to Saturday. But here is the big problem. This system basically puts the brakes on, slows down, and meanders over the same area for as many as three to four days. Now, the computer models are all predicting different intensities. We have many computer models. So the average, 50% of them, saying it's going to be somewhere right on the borderline between a Cat 2 and a Cat 3 storm. And probably what this system will be remembered for is tremendous rainfall, which you're seeing here, rainfalls over 20 inches, some places approaching 30 inches of rain. And to put that into perspective, 30 inches of rain, 300 inches of snow, 25 feet of snow, that's five people right on top of each other. That's how much snow it would be if it was snow, but you convert that to rain and we're talking massive flash flooding as possible. So if you're told to evacuate, evacuate.
Yeah, flash flooding is very serious. People sometimes don't take that as serious, but it's a big deal. Jeff, I want to ask you, though, when you're looking at that trajectory on your map, when it comes to the storm and it's expected to slow down, what does that mean for Texas in the coming days? Yeah, and that's the biggest problem. We don't know exactly where it's going to slow down. We don't know if it's going to kind of make a loop move north again, make a loop move south. But what we do know is it's going to be stuck over this general area for four to five days. That means 20 to 30 inches of rain in some isolated areas. By the way, the most rain that ever fell in a tropical system was Amelia back in 1978. That was 48 inches. We're not expecting 48 inches, but it goes to show you the potential is there for more than three feet of rain, and that would cause tremendous tremendous and life-threatening flooding. So heed the evacuation orders, pay very close attention, get to higher ground. This is a serious situation as we head through the weekend. we've seen in at least a half a decade here, Rosemary. I want to show you some video coming out of this region as well, kind of the time-lapse perspective, if we have it for you, it shows exactly what we're dealing with across uh, Victoria Harbor, a tremendous building of the storm in the past 24 hours that brought these thunderstorms across this region. Of course, dangerous winds as well to go along with it, but the images look as such, as you take a look at the harbor, you have images as this across the city, uh, home to over 6 million people when you consider the metro population. And this storm system, incredibly was just a mid-grade tropical storm this time yesterday. So it goes from that within 24 hours to almost doubling its speed, becoming a severe typhoon, and winds peaking out roughly around 175 kilometers per hour. So borderline category three equivalent from a tropical storm inside of one day. In fact, the Hong Kong Observatory issued a rare signal 10. What this indicates to us is that folks across the city of Hong Kong urged to stay indoors and also expecting winds to exceed 118 kilometers per hour for several hours in a row, potentially gusting over 220 kilometers per hour. Only three times in the past two decades have we had a storm with this threshold. And again, all of this happening within the last 24 hours. So you see folks out there uh, having their best Michael Jackson impersonation with a lean into the wind. And of course, you look across the storm system going to really move over 
a densely populated area. So we're talking several hundred millimeters of rainfall inside the next two days, some 60 plus million people in the path of the storm system as it moves ashore. So a pretty uh, incredible and also potentially damaging storm system. And you think about Vincente, which was a storm that made landfall here five years ago with the same sort of uh, danger uh, threshold and category left behind over a dozen fatalities. And of course, we know tens of millions of dollars in losses. So this storm system, again, moves over an area home to almost 70 million people when you uh, round the numbers out. And we're talking somewhere to the population of, say, uh, the country of France. That's the scale of uh, the amount of people it's set to be impacted by this. So here's how we uh, shape up so far in 2017, very much in line with what you expect so far this season. For the average number of uh, tropical storms, typhoons, we're exceeding the average. Work your way into super typhoons. We've already exceeded that average as well. So definitely a season to remember so far. Get it, 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 get it,